All right, I think we can get started now. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation on ODT Service version 14. My name is Kyle. I'm part of the quality assurance team here at Open Door. I've been working with Service for a little over five years now, and I'm going to be walking you through our new update. So a quick overview of our agenda today. Uh, we're going to be giving an overview of our major feature, which is field service projects. It's quite a lot to it, so that'll take up most of our time today. Uh, after that, take a quick moment to highlight a couple extra features that we've also added in this update. Following that, we'll have a overview of the roadmap for future versions, as well as a word on questions. And that will conclude our presentation. So, the major feature for this update is field service projects. So, and this allows you a way to organize and track uh, maintenance related to any equipment or service units you have out in the field. So, you can create a service project, and from there, you are able to create field tickets that relate to various bits of maintenance you might perform. Uh, each project can create multiple tickets as you fi find necessary. So, you can do one or you can do many. Uh, in addition to this, we've added some enhancements to other parts of our app, notably service templates and service units to accommodate the addition of field service projects. We've also added a new field service technician role center, as well as an optional approval process that you can use with your field service if you wish. So here we are in Business Central. So first off, we'll go to SERP management setup. And if I scroll to the bottom here, you can see we now have a section for field tickets with a couple of options. So one to just enable the feature, as well as a setup for uh, number series. And then we have our last field here, which is to enable the field ticket approvals. So I have this enabled so I can demonstrate this for you a little later. But again, this is completely optional. So if you do not wish to use it, you can just leave that turned off. So from here, we're going to quickly go take a look at resources. Here in our resource card, see we now have a new field for tech, uh, field technician user ID. So this just tells you which field, uh, resource card is assigned to which technician. Back here in our role center, uh, our next stop is actually going to be service templates. So I opened up a service template here, and you can see we have a field for template type. Now, in previous versions of service, this had, we had options for uh, service tickets and planned maintenance. And so this allows you to control which types of tickets different templates would show up on. So for example, if you had a template with a type of planned maintenance, it would show up in planned maintenance tickets, but not service tickets. With the addition of field service, we've now added a field type to this list as well. So this works the exact same. So if you have a template set to field, it will not show it will show up in field service, but not in planned maintenance or service. And vice versa, if you have a template set to service or planned maintenance, it will not show up in field service. And of course, if you have it sele selected to all, it will show up in, in everything. So I just wanted to highlight that that change has been made, as well as just a reminder that if you do intend to take advantage of field service, uh, please take a moment to configure your service templates accordingly. All right, and our last little bit of setup, we hop over to our customer card. We're going to go into customer 40,000 here. And you can see at the very bottom here, we have an option for the field ticket approval is required that I have turned on. So once again, if you wish to use this feature, you would enable it on the customers you wish to have approval. If you don't wish to, to use it, or at least not on that customer, you can just leave that turned off. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so with that done, that concludes our major setups. Now you can see here on the role center, we have some queues for field service. Uh, but before I go in there, I'm going to take a moment to go to our service units to highlight one other thing. So if we go into our first unit here, under Actions, 
So in previous versions of service, we had these two actions to create a new ticket or a ticket from a template directly from a service unit card. Uh, with the addition of field service projects, we've now added actions to do that as well. So if you wish to create a field service project this way, you can. Uh, for today's purposes, however, I'm going to be going through the queues on the role center. So we go back to the role center and open up our field service projects list. We'll just create a new one. All right, and you'll see at first glance, this looks very similar to other ticket types we have in ODT service. And of course, we can set it up in the exact same way. So we'll go select customer. We'll select our customer 40,000 from earlier. Can assign a default service unit. I'll go for our service unit one. We can assign our technician. And if we scroll down, you can see we have our ticket lines, which look identical. Go ahead and add a template. Let's go for an oil change. So from here, if I select our oil change line and I go to our line option here, you can see we have a new action for field to create a field ticket. So if I select that, it'll ask if I want to create a new field ticket, which I do. Right. And from here, uh, you can see we have created a new field ticket. So it's already been populated with some information related to which line we are creating this for, as well as some spots for additional information or notes you might want to make about the service being performed. If we scroll all the way down, to, you can see our field ticket lines. And here we can fill in anything that's related to the work being performed. So for example, say I want to have a technician performing work. I might assign an hour of work. Maybe they need some items. So I can assign an item. And of course, you can fill out anything else you need to. Now, once you've, uh, you're done with your field ticket and everything looks as it should, uh, normally you could simply hit post and post the field ticket and that would be it. Uh, however, as you may remember, our customer required our approval. So in this case, we're going to go through the approval process. So if I just scroll to the top here and take a little note of this status field here. So if I click send to send this for approval, you can see our status has changed to pending approval. So from here, of course, someone would review it and they can make a decision to either approve or reject it. Alternatively, you could cancel this if you decide, decided to. But if everything looks good, you can select approve. You'll see our status has changed to approved to reflect this. And now that our field ticket has been approved, we're allowed to post it. So from here, I just go under the ticket menu here, all the way at the end. See, we have an option for posted field tickets. And you can see there is a field ticket here that we just posted. And of course, there would be others if we created more. So this allows you to easily review which field tickets have been done. Now, let's say we wanted to create another field ticket. We absolutely could. So as you can see, it's not uh, we can create multiples if we have the need. Now, I'm not going to mess around with this one too much because I'm going to demonstrate something else. So if I hop out of our field service project here, back to our role center, go to settings, apologies, wrong button, go to our available role centers, and you'll see that we have a new role center for field ticket technician. So if I open that up, you'll see we have a couple of, of queues here filtered for different tickets. So we have ones assigned to the technician in question, and then we have a couple others that are just all field tickets. If I open up the list for my field tickets, and go to one at the very end here, and you can see this matches up with the field ticket that I just created earlier. So this is a way for your field technicians to see what uh, tickets and tasks they have outstanding.
and just hopping back to our business manager role center. And if we go back to our field service project. Now let's say all of that checked out. We finished all our field tickets. There's no other outstanding work. As, of, as you may have noticed already, this functions very similar to uh, previous forms of tickets. So you can just confirm actuals, post your invoice, and mark ticket complete as you would with any other ticket type. All right, so that about concludes everything for field service projects. Uh, but of course, we have a couple other small features for this update. Uh, we've added some mobile client actions to our uh, task rule center. Uh, with this, you can send SMS or email messages whenever a technician leaves or arrives at a job site. Uh, we've also added an option to merge two service units together. So say, for example, you accidentally end up with duplicate service units, you now have a way to just merge those two together. So coming soon for version 15, uh, a couple of features we already have planned to add is the addition of creating service role centers, as well as adding resource capacities to our visual resource scheduler feature. And that about concludes our presentation for today. Uh, if you have any questions about anything you've seen today, feel free to send a message to hi at opendoorerp.com and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.